All right, let's go ahead and check out this project. I'm gonna click on this button, and we see this nice, quick, slick animation kind of come in with some easing, and then we click it again, and it goes right back, and it's just so smooth. Now, the frame rate of this video doesn't really do it justice. When you're actually using this on a computer, it looks way much more smooth, uh, so don't let that, you know, affect your opinion of it, but it's just a really fun animation which we're gonna use timeline. All right, so uh, if we open up the before uh, starter project, this is what you're going to see. We have some HTML already created. Um, I'm gonna go over that and we'll talk about, and we'll start doing the actual uh, JavaScript here. So div class container is the overall element that holds everything and it's basically a display flex, which means it's also gonna have two columns inside of it. The first column is the aside. That is the dark menu that shows up right here. So when you load this up, this is what you see by default with this before project. There's no, it doesn't work, okay? So this is exactly where we're, this is the starting point so far. So this is the aside, and then the main element, which is right over here, and has this little menu toggle button, is this whole section right here, this light blue. All right, now I'm gonna switch back over here to our CSS. And I'm just gonna point out just a few areas that make sense. Uh, for instance, that we have dis, uh, the containers display flex, so it takes those two columns, puts them uh, into columns essentially. Um, the toggle button, there's nothing special here, just a little hover effect right there. And then also, you're gonna notice it says aside, we have this transform, translate x negative 100, as well as the main element. Those are our two columns. And if I uncomment both of those, we're just taking translate X. This one's 200% and this one's 100%. I had to use 200% because it wasn't going all the way off the screen. When we make that change, there you go. It, it's hidden by default so that we don't, we don't have to deal with that flashing of unstyled content. So let's go ahead and make this work based on click. All right, so the first element that we're gonna need to define here in our uh, JavaScript, I'm gonna control B to get rid of that sidebar, is the actual button we have to know when somebody clicks on it right so we're gonna say const menu toggle equals document dot query selector and that's going to be our menu talk <coughs> sorry menu toggle right there all right so we're also want to have a boolean value value that will help us determine if the menu is currently open or closed so we're gonna say let menu status we're using let because we need to change it False. All right. After that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take uh, our timeline and we're going to define the timeline with a couple defaults. So if you remember, we, we define a timeline by saying const menu TL for timeline. And I'll zoom up here just a bit. And this is going to say gsap.timeline. And I'm going to open these up in brackets. We're going to say defaults. And then also, we can go ahead and open that up in brackets and we're gonna say a duration of 0.3, so things are gonna kinda of move quick. And also with the ease of power four in out. Okay, now doing that in and of itself doesn't actually do anything. We've only taken a, a timeline and we've tied it to a property called menu timeline. All right, so what we can actually do is start animating that uh, timeline and then just say, we'll just pause it immediately so it doesn't work. So we're gonna say menu timeline right here. Let's zoom up just so you can see everything. And we're going to say two. And we're gonna wrap this in array because we wanna take both the aside element, which is the side menu bar, and the main element, and we wanna push them over back to this default state of X being zero. So we'll say, aside here and then we're also going to say main here all right and then after that we're going to say x zero and i want to stagger them slightly so just point two. Oh, yeah we have to make sure by the way that you wrap that in a parentheses that it wasn't showing me an error though which is kind of strange um that should work right there let's go ahead and save all right so if i refresh notice how it instantly is animating. So we don't want that. What we would rather have is we want it to we want to pause it by default. So what we do is to say menu timeline dot paused and we just passed in true. 
All right, so now if I save it and we go back, nothing's happening. Okay, that's exactly what we want. Um, what we wanna do now, and we're gonna add to this by the way, but what we're gonna do now is uh, take our menu toggle and that's this right here, that's the actual button that's clicked and we're gonna add an event listener of click. All right, so let's remove this. <clears throat> Once it's been clicked, we can check the status of menu status. All right, is it true or false? So we're gonna say if, and then if we put exclamation point, that means if it's false, so menu status, then we're gonna say menu dot, or menu tl dot play method, and then else, we're gonna say menu timeline dot reverse. Now, something we also have to do is set menu status to true. And then as such, set it false down here when it's been clicked again. All right, so we're toggling between back and forth you know, these elements. So if I uh, refresh this, here we go, we click it again, and they both go back in. Now one thing that's strange is you're gonna see an overlapping effect here that was not intended. You see how the, uh, if I zoom up, this little hamburger menu is on top, you can see it on top of here. Um, I didn't intend for that to happen. It, it wasn't happening in my original project. And what had happened is i fairly certain I know what the, the issue is. Uh, in the original project, I put main first here and then aside second. Now let's see if that fixes it. I think it might. There you go. Now we don't have that issue because it does take into account the order of the elements you're specifying in the array. So just keep that in mind that the order, it's something I learned right now, will definitely affect your animation. But that's basically it. That's all it takes to do that. We're just moving things around with uh, transform translate X and we're handling it within GSAP.